Welcome to Lunch of the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark, and we're in Mark chapter 1. We're going to be starting verse 35 this lesson. But before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Now, as we saw in the last lesson where Jesus is at Simon Peter's house, he heals his mother-in-law, he casts out more demons from people, and people are coming. It says, and all the city was gathered together at the door, door of Simon Peter's house in verse 33. But I want you to know that when Jesus healed people, he didn't heal people to show that he has <clears throat> authority and, uh, or to reveal his authority and his Godhead. No, Jesus healed people because he loves them and he cares for them. I don't want you to get the idea that Jesus, you know, was, was getting ready to heal someone and say, I, you know, I'm going to heal them and there you watch they're going to believe in me because I healed them, right? I'm going to show them that I'm God. I'm going to cast the demon out of that, that person. No, Jesus didn't do things to prove who he was. He did things because people had needs. People, have, people are sick. People are, are, they had demon spirits and, and Jesus cared for them and he loved them and he cast out the demons. He healed their sicknesses. So he healed people because he cares for them. And now in verse 35, it says, And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. Now, verses 35 to 39 deal with Jesus going alone and praying. Jesus praying, but he wants to do it being alone. So, it says here, and in the morning, rising up before before day. Now, this is the, the next day after uh, verse 21, where he entered the synagogue. And after he did the healings and the miracles of casting out the demons and, and healing the people. This is the next morning. So it says here, in the morning, rising up a great while before day, which means many hours before the sun come up. It wasn't just, you know, it was many hours before the sun came up that he, uh, he departed into a solitary place and there he prayed. Now, the most important time to meet God is early in the morning before you go out into this world with all of its temptations and trials and rejection of who, of who you are and of who you represent. Jesus prayed alone f from the world. He was away from the world and away from his disciples. If Jesus communed with the Father early and before he began his ministry, then we must take this as an example for us also. If it was important for Jesus to pray early in the morning before he started that day and before, before he started his ministry that day, then how important is it for us to meet God early in the morning before we start our day? Don't wake up and barge into the world without the, without the Father's covering in prayer. Satan's kingdom wants to influence your thoughts and your feelings and to get them turned toward the world. Toward He wants to get them turned towards fear, towards anger, towards jealousy, towards pride. If you don't get up in the morning and put God first, trust me, <laughs> Satan is going to be right behind you, right on your tail to get you to focus on things of this world, the feelings of this world, the thoughts of this world, to get your mind geared towards Satan's kingdom of anger and hatred and, and, and jealousy and pride. Listen, we're no, match, we're no match for Satan and his kingdom. We need conviction of the importance of early prayer. 
We need to have the conviction in our heart that we get up in the morning and we pray and we seek God because we need him to protect us throughout the day. We want God's influence in our life, not Satan's influence in our life. Psalm chapter 5 and verse 3, it says, My voice shall you hear in the morning. O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee, and will look up. Right? In the morning. Most important time of the day for prayers in the morning before we start the day. Because if you listen, if we don't start the day with our heavenly Father, then everything else that day will everything else that day will, will be off kilter. Everything off everything for the rest of that day is going to be geared toward worldliness. If you don't start the day with prayer, if you get up and you're, you start work and everything, oh, I forgot to pray. I didn't spend much time in prayer. I think I'll do it now. It's two in the afternoon. Your, your day is almost shot. You're, you're, for sure, you're going to be in worldliness. You're going to be thinking with, with Satan's kin. I'm not saying you're not saved. I'm just saying you, we need to get our minds straight. And to get our thoughts on, on heavenly things and early in the morning before, before we start the day. Pray and seek God's heart. Have, have a couple memory verses. Go over a couple of memory verses before. It's something that you can meditate upon. It, from God's word to strengthen you, to get you geared up for this day. Because you don't know what's coming this day. You don't know the, the snares that Satan has set for you. Right? And it says in Psalm 141 verses 8 through 10, right? But my God, my, my, my thoughts are unto thee. Let me turn to that. Psalm 141. Psalm 141 verses 8 to 10. But my eyes are unto thee, O God, the Lord. In thee is my trust. Leave not my soul destitute. Then he says what? Keep me from the snares which they have laid for me and the gins of the workers of iniquity. Let the wicked fall into their own nets, while that I with all escape. What does he say? Keep me from the snares which they have laid for me. Listen, listen to me. Satan has already planned snares for your life this day. He already has planned for your life snares. He says, keep me from the snares which they have laid for me and the gins of the workers of iniquity, right? Satan has already planned out how he wants to trap you, how he wants to catch you and how he wants to, to, to destroy your life this day. And, and, and if, if you don't take prayer in the morning seriously, the enemy is right there with his, with his snares, with his traps set for you so that you can get worldly, so that he, you, can be, you can be ineffective for the kingdom of God this day. For most people, most Christians who start the day and don't pray, by noontime, their, their life with God is, I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying you lose your salvation, but their life with God that day is shot. And, and can you get it back? Can you recover? Yes. But it's much more easier to start the day early in the morning, uh, get up out of bed and spend time with God and spend time praying and seeking him. So it says here, verse 35, that he departed into a solitary place and there prayed. He, there he prayed. Now, this Greek word for prayed is prosukomai. And pros means toward, and eukomai means to pray, and with the idea of praying toward God. Now, it's in the imperfect tense, meaning that Jesus continued to pray through the early morning hours. So, <laughs> when Jesus prayed, it wasn't some quick prayer like you know like some of us are guilty of these little you know quick prayers <laughs> but
but he prayed through the early morning hours. He spent time with God. He prayed for several hours before morning came. Listen, our prayers are to be directed toward God and we are to be conscious of God's presence during prayer. How can I, how important can I tell you that this is, is that when you pray, you need to be conscious of God's presence when you pray. Matthew 6, verse 6. Matthew 6, verse 6 says, But when you pray, pray, enter, pray, enter into your closet. And when you have shut your door, who do you pray to? Pray to your Father, which is in secret, and your Father, which sees in secret, shall reward thee openly. Pray to your Father, who is in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, he will openly reward you. In Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting, right? God knows our hearts. In Isaiah 65, 24, and it shall come to pass that what? Before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me and I will answer thee and I will show thee great and mighty things which you know not, right? Jeremiah 17, verse 10, I, the Lord, what? Search the heart. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. God searches the heart. God searches the heart. Listen, when you pray, don't aimlessly speak your words into the air while your mind is someone else. Don't be, <laughs> don't be guilty of that. I think, I, think, I think we're all, in a sense, guilty of that where we're praying and we're just speaking words, but our mind is somewhere else. And then we catch ourselves. Oh yeah, sorry God, right? <laughs> and and we, we're, we're, we, we get into the habit of praying and we get it, it's so routine that now we can pray with our words. The words are coming out, but our mind is somewhere else. And, and we, we need, listen, this kind of praying is disrespectful to the presence of God. This kind of praying disrespects God's presence when you pray. When, when, when you pray, God needs, our prayers are to be directed to God and we are, we are to be conscious of God's presence during prayer. God's presence during prayer. I know when I go to work in the morning and, and as, as I, a lot of times I, I enjoy walking to work. So when I walk to work, uh, it's about a 15 minute walk. And when I do, I look up into the sky and, and I pray and I seek God's heart and I pray. And when I look up into the sky, I pray, listen, I pray to a God who is sitting on his throne, right? And he is sitting in unapproachable light. And at his right hand, Jesus is seated. And there are angels all around his throne. And the four beasts are there at the throne of God saying, holy, 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 Lord God almighty, who is, who was, and who is to come, right? When I pray, this is what I see. I, I look into the sky. I look into the early morning. Sometimes there's clouds, sometimes there's stars. But when I, when I pray, I look towards the sky and I see God sitting on his throne. I see Jesus at his right hand. I see the angels of God. I see bright light, the angels with, with garments of light. I see, I see uh, everything is manifested in light and I see God sitting there, right? 
and and the, and the angels and and everything they're all worshiping god i listen i pray to a god who is there and with all my heart i desire to respect his presence when i pray I know when I when I go to work in the morning, when I pray at night, when I pray in the morning, I want to respect his. I pray to a God who I know he's there. And I want to respect his presence. And, and I know sometimes I catch myself praying and my mind is wandering somewhere. I'm thinking about something. Maybe I'm thinking about I'm praying about one person and I'm thinking about someone else that I want to pray for. And it's like we disrespect the presence of God. When we do that, we need to listen. When you pray, what do you see? What do you see when you pray? Do you, do you, do you look up to the sky or if you were at bed at night, when you look up to the ceiling, do you see a God who's there? Do you see a God who's sitting on his throne? Jesus at his right hand, surrounded by glorious angels worshiping him, saints in heaven that have died and have gone to heaven. Do you see a mass of people worshiping God, praising and singing to him? Is that what you see? What do you see when you pray? We need to see a God who's there. The Bible says Jesus went out early in the morning. He wanted to spend time with his father and he prayed to his God who was there. And he went out and he prayed and he prayed. He prayed for hours and spent time with God early in the morning, just like we should. When we get up early in the morning, we need to pray and seek God. We need God in our life. First thing, first thing in the morning, we need him in our life and we need a God who's there. All right, we're going to start verse 36 next lesson. But until then, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.